we often thought of women as victims in crisis situations, but what's really cutting edge is thinking of women as uh, change agents, as people who can prevent conflict or ameliorate the effects of conflict. People are just beginning to understand the role that women can have in conflict prevention and mitigation. The one thing that really strikes me as I travel in the Muslim world, whether I'm in Pakistan or in Cairo or in India, is there is a common refrain that I hear which is, we want to learn, we want to earn. And I'm so inspired by what I see on the ground because it's drive, it's desire, it's really an eagerness to participate in their economy, to gain some livelihood skills, to earn a living, to give back to the community, to take care of their children. And you know, I think that's what really inspires me. There is still a lot to be done. The road is not closed yet. We have a lot of things that we need to do and focus on, and I'm talking about Iraq. The, we need to always focus on putting the, the priorities right on the table in front of the government of Iraq. They have developed a strategy to empower women, but it's still on paper. It needs to be translated to action plans. It needs to be adopted by the government. and, and um, this will not mean anything unless it is supported and pushed through the international community. Our NGO, it's called actually Invest in Muslim Women, has funded one workshop also through ICRD. And at that particular um, workshop, we trained 35 women madrasa teachers. And what we're realizing is it was very exciting. The, the feedback was phenomenal. But the lack of funding for women is a major step, stumbling block, not only for economic empowerment and progress for women and education for women, but for peace in the community. Empowering these women could make them incredible and vital change makers on the ground and in the bazaars. I would say they need to stop funding the government and start an investigation and start working with uh, civil society organizations closely and making sure that uh, that programs are um, not only successful, but the programs are uh, resultful. That they uh, they will they will have a result from each program because I think billions of dollars has been spent and and it's not very clear where it went. Um, so I, I think that developing uh, or empowering civil society organizations to work with directly. And then when the governments show transparency, of course, work through them as well. And I think it will be a great situation if civil society organizations could work with the government together as partners. Uh, and, and that's the ideal situation, but we are not in an ideal situation right now. When you work in, in international development, you should have uh, the first-hand knowledge of what you're talking about. Therefore, you have to have you have to go to those countries where you're going to work with. You're going to, you have to live in that community. You have to understand that community. Otherwise, you won't be able to design programs. You won't be able to work effectively in that arena. I had three key takeaways that I took out of today's discussion. Uh, we need to build roadmaps that help women to be those change agents within their developing countries, especially in conflict societies. Secondly, that we need to better connect women and men together in roles that are going to help promote and engender peace building, conflict prevention, conflict mitigation, but it's fundamental that it, it's the relationship that's important, not necessarily the structures, the government roles necessarily that we have in that. And lastly, that we need to keep funding women-led civil society organizations in the developing world, and especially in conflict states, so that they can engage in conflict prevention, conflict mitigation, and recovery that governments maybe are not poised to be able to handle. Educated women, capable women, trained women are uh, an absolute linchpin in the chain of uh, a country's economic and social and political development. So to strengthen their position in society has got to be a fundamental goal and mission, uh, not just of the Afghan government, but for all the friends of Afghanistan the world over. Conflict on large scale is often 
a reflection of conflict in smaller environments, whether it be person to person or group to group. Uh, ethnic groups among ethnic groups and tribes their problems and women are often more willing to resolve these and to listen to one another and to find ways to work together even when they disagree.